Pierre Curie, who was the husband of Madame Marie Curie, as in radium. But in addition to his radium studies, he and his brother had an interest in what was called piezo or piezo, some people say piezoelectricity. And that's just the property of some crystals that if you put pressure on them, they generate an electrical potential. So piezoelectricity means pressure electric. So this is the basis of everything we do is if you... Uh, this is the listening part of it, where the pressure of the wave comes back and hits the crystal and generates a current. Uh, but you can reverse that by putting a potential across the crystal. You can make it send out a shock wave, and so that's how we transmit energy. So these crystals, they started out using quartz crystals. Now we use man-made ceramics, especially a lead zirconate titanate, or PZT, you'll see in the literature. Um, and this was just the idea, that if you compress the crystal, you get an electric potential, or if you put an electric potential across, you can deform the crystal, make it larger, and send out a, a shock wave. Um, Paul Langevin, also French, uh, actually worked with the Curies and carried on this interest in piezoelectricity um, and actually carried this over actually into practical applications in naval sonar. He got a boost. Uh, this is one of his early uh, pieces of equipment. This would have either been over the edge of the boat or would have been mounted on the bottom with this inside and this part outside the hull. And the crystal was quartz. He needed a big crystal. We'll talk about what that might be a good idea. And you couldn't find single quartz crystals that big that were pure enough. So it's put together as this mosaic of little individual quartz crystals to make up the entire thing. What you could do with this was certainly measure depth, for example, uh, how deep is the water beneath your boat. Ultrasound transducers. Any transducer is going to basically have the crystal, which is the piezoelectric material, some backing to keep it from uh, sending oscillations the wrong way, and often a lens to help focus it as it goes out the front. Quarter wave matching transformer concept. If any of you are old enough to remember when we had the TVs that you had to use these little connectors for the antenna, and then you got cable, and you had to get this adapter because the cable came in here. This converted something like 75 ohm to 300 ohm. And any quarter wave matching transformer just simply limits the amount of reflection at the boundary between things of two different impedance. And so that's a good example. The coating on your camera lens, multi-coated lenses, is that coating bridges the gap between air and glass and reduces reflection. On our ultrasound equipment, the covering that goes over the transducer is actually a form of quarter wave matching transformer to help match the element's density to the human body's density. And there's another thing in the formula, which is our scan gel, which just looks like goop, but it's actually very high-tech goop because it's deliberately uh, of a density that bridges again that and allows efficient transmission of sound into the body. Real-time came along where you could introduce either a moving, maybe this one oscillated around, and as each one of these elements came in contact with the patient, it would fire, and then the next one would come along and fire and then you could sum those up on the display monitor and get a moving picture. That's kind of analogous to the early radar installations where you had either back and forth movement or up and down movement. Well, the newer radars are just these flat screens with lots and lots of little individual antennas, and that's exactly the concept we have now, which is lots and lots of little individual transducer elements, each one coming out to its own connection on the big connecting panel here.